Hi everybody and welcome to Bearcat Update. Now, I may look a little unfamiliar to y'all, but I'm your guest host this week, Matt Rapp. And today we're gonna to be covering this week's homestand for the volleyball team, the road trip from soccer, and the massive offensive performance from the football team. Before we get into the action, make sure to take a second and subscribe to KNWT TV on YouTube. Don't forget to hit the bell and be notified when new content is posted. Let's get into the news. Left to right, will take the hand off, and he's hitting to the back. He'll breaks loose from one would-be tackler around the corner, right side to the 30, 25, sideline 20 to the 15, the 10, the 5, into the end zone. Touchdown, Northwest. The volleyball team spent the week in Maryville collecting a 2-1 overall record for the week. It all started on Tuesday when Missouri Western traveled to Bearcat Arena. Sadly for Northwest, it'd be a swift loss as the Griffins swept the Bearcats. Junior Abby Brunson would shine a bright spot for the Bearcats as she would collect 10 kills and 3 blocks. However, the team as a whole would struggle hitting just a mere .143 compared to the Griffins .331. The Bearcats would, however, bounce back later in the week, collecting a 3-0 sweep over the number 25-ranked Washburn Ichabods. Long story short, it was a career day for the junior Olivia Durr, as she would tie for her career high for kills, posting 18 on the day. Junior Abby Brunson would also have a huge day on the net, notching 7 blocks as well as 7 kills. The sweep against Washburn was a big one when it comes to the series history. It would mark just the sixth time that Bearcats would accomplish a 3-0 sweep of the Ichabods. Finally, volleyball would cap off the homestand this week with a 3-1 victory over Emporia State. The Bearcats won their first two sets and would go on to lose the third. However, they bounced back to take set number four and win the match. Junior Abby Brunson once again played lights out, posting 15 kills and three blocks on the day. Freshman Ella Caffrey also had a big day, notching 46 assists with 10 digs for her sixth career double-double. This match also marked a huge milestone for head coach Amy Worth, as she notched her 199th career victory, tying Sarah Polester's program record of 199 coaching wins. She will look to break this record this Friday when they take on Nebraska Kearney. Sophomore Ella Caffrey has made a big difference on the court despite her young age. So our reporter, Micah Story, sat down with her to learn more about her beyond the game. Take it away, Micah. Ella Caffrey is only a sophomore here at Northwest, but has already established her place in the rotation. Um, I love playing volleyball because I get to play with some of my best friends. We all get to compete towards the same goal. Because we all love to win. It's just so fun because these girls are my family. I mean, obviously I am a little younger than some of the girls that we have playing, but I mean, I don't really feel like it most of the time because we are so close. And like, Abby is our team mom and she would be my mom, but it's nice to get to play with them because they know since I'm younger, they pick me up sometimes and always are giving me confidence. But I really, I mean, my impact comes through a team effort, I couldn't do anything without any of them, so. Um, so last year I redshirted, and just getting to learn from Alyssa was really great because obviously she was the player of the year. So getting to see how she ran the team gave me, got me ready for this year so that I could come in and be ready to run the team. Um, I chose here because I'm from a small town as well in Iowa. So coming to Maryville, which is also obviously a small town, it just felt like home right away, and the coaches were super welcoming, and the girls were really nice. So. If you're hearing all of this volleyball talk and are a little bit confused, well, we've got you covered as our reporter, Anthony Martinez, sat down to break down the basic ins and outs of the game. Take it away, Anthony. Hey guys, I'm Anthony Martinez and I'm with Bearcat Update. Today I'm back with another sport rules segment. Today we'll be covering the sport of volleyball. Volleyball was created with the idea of mixing a Batman net and a soccer ball by William James Morgan. Volleyball can sometimes be hard to understand, but today we'll be going over the simple basics of it. Let's get right into it. The first basic rule we are going over is serving. A serve is what starts the game off and also happens after every point is scored. 
When you serve the ball, you cannot cross or touch the end line before making contact with the ball. And if you do, a foot fault will be called by the ref and award the opposition a point. If you score straight off the serve, that is called an ace. After the serve, each team can only hit the ball three times before having to hit the ball over the net to the other team. Here's an example of that. The same player cannot hit the ball twice. If a team hits the ball more than three times, it will be called a fault and the play will be blown dead. Also, you cannot touch the net while playing the ball, but if you are not playing the ball and accidentally touch the net, that is allowed. The final rule we are going over is called as carrying, also known as lifting. This is when a player makes a longer contact with the ball instead of having it bounce off of them. If you carry a ball in volleyball, it will be called as a violation and the play will be called dead. That's the basics for volleyball. I hope after watching this segment you have a better understanding of how the rules work within the sport. I also recommend playing the sport as it is more fun as it sounds. I'll be here in the back to our host, Jason. Thanks, Anthony. We hope that helped our viewers out there watch with a little bit more confidence as we near the postseason. Speaking of end of season stretches, the soccer team hit the road this past week for a set of road matchups. They started out by traveling to Claremore, Oklahoma to take on the Rogers State Hillcats. It was a big one for the Bearcats as they not only would snag their fourth straight victory, but goalkeeper Lily Ellis would also notch her fourth straight shutout, the 19th of her career. The sole goal of the game belonged to freshman Zimina Arno. After their win against Rogers State, the Bearcats would travel back to Missouri to take on the Missouri Southern State Lions. Goalkeeper Lily Ellis once again would lead the team to another shutout, their fifth in a row in the 20th of her career. This, unfortunately though, would not result as a win as they would draw the Lions 0-0. A strong stand by the Lions goalie Bella Smith would hold Northwest to 11 total shots with six on goal and none falling. All right, we're gonna take a quick break here on Bearcat Update, so make sure to stick around as we cover soccer and the big week from football. KZLX is a student-run radio station where Northwest students have complete freedom during their shifts. KZLX also hosts many radio shows such as Nermageddon, Revive, Day-to-Day -day Picks, and more. To learn more, visit kzlxfm.com. And coming up next here, I'll have my interview with our new guest here on Who's Next on the X right after this quick break. Another day, we're on in 20. Good morning. Good morning. Not a lot of us do. I know, but maybe this might be your opportunity for that. Yeah. Who's Next on the X? Welcome back to Bearcat Update. After a disappointing homecoming loss last week, the Bearcats felt as they should return the favor this week as they traveled to Topeka, Kansas. They took on the 1-7 Washburn Ichabods for their homecoming. It was a massive day for the Bearcats, posting 441 total yards of offense and 52 total points. 28 of those points came in the second quarter alone. Sophomore running back Jay Harris would once again rush for over 100 yards for his ninth straight game. He notched 123 yards on the ground with three touchdowns on 24 carries. He wasn't the only ground force to hit that 100-yard mark, though, as sophomore teammate Tank Young would also reach the 100-yard rushing mark, hitting 109 yards on 12 carries. Quarterback Mike Hullensee would also toss three touchdowns through the air to round off the Bearcats' offensive storm. The offense wasn't the only aspect of the firing team, though, as the defense would post four total turnovers and two sacks. The special teams also decided to get in on the action with a punt that would be recovered for a touchdown. Though it was a positive day for the Bearcats overall, turnovers still looked to be an issue as the Bearcats turned the ball over three times on the day. Nonetheless, the Bearcats moved back into the win column, advancing 5-4 and four on the season and will look to end on a high note as they go into their final two games of the season in the coming weeks. All right, we're going to take one more final break, so stick around to see the preview of the upcoming basketball season. We'll be right back. <music> 
Northwest Missouri State University's four student media outlets, KNWT Television, KZLX LPFM, the Northwest Missourian, and Tower Yearbook have been ranked among the top in the nation for the College Media Association Pinnacle Awards. The Northwest Student Media Department takes pride in ensuring students are up to date on the latest technology, equipment, industry secrets, and offers profession-based learning experiences from day one. To support Northwest Student Media, check out our content on all of our platforms. Northwest Tower Yearbook has dedicated over a century to documenting life on campus and in the Maryville community. The award-winning organization has numerous pacemaker awards and a spot in the Associated Collegiate Press Hall of Fame. Learn more about Tower at the handles below. The time has finally come and the basketball season is right around the corner. Both the men's and women's teams are looking to continue the strong tradition of late. Men's basketball is entering the season ranked number one in both the MIAA and the Division II Power Rankings. In two weeks, the Northwest Missouri State Bearcats basketball season is underway. The Bearcats are coming off an impressive season, going 31-3 on the season, ending in the regional semifinals at home. Some would say the Bearcats have some pressure taken off their shoulders, as they don't feel the need to repeat a national title, as their streak came to a close last year. But the pressure is still on to succeed, going into the 2023-2024 through 2024 season. The Bearcats are missing some key pieces in Diego Bernard and Luke Waters, who are both two and three time national champion winners. Diego was a big part of the offensive success and leadership of the team last year. He was a leader on offense, but also on defense, setting the tone for the rest of the team. On offense, he was averaging 15 plus a game and leading in assists. Now that Diego has moved on, the Bearcats need an answer all around and their schedule will be difficult. Two time national champion, West Streamer is also returning this season. West has been a big part of the team's success in the past few years, playing outstanding on defense, taking charges, and guarding on ball really well. He's also a big part to the Northwest's offense, where he seems to score effortlessly from three. This year, Bennett Sturz will also be returning. Last year, he won MIAA Freshman of the Year, as him and Diego were leading scores last year. Bennett is looking to have a breakout year. The Bearcats start off with a few tournaments in St. Joe in South Dakota, where they will be tested early with some hard matchups. The Bearcats also rank in the top 20 in the country before the season has even started, adding some more added pressure to the year. Coach McCollum looks to lead his team this year and prove themselves again this coming season. Coach McCollum was quoted after the season last year saying, the last time we lost, we came back and won a national championship. Big words from the Bearcats coach. The Bearcats start their season in less than two weeks now. How will they perform this season? I'm very excited to see. This has been Caleb Allen, signing off. This is for great reason too, as they'll be returning three of last year's starters with senior Wes Dreamer, junior Mitch Muscari, and last year's MIAA Freshman of the Year, sophomore Bennett Sturtz. They're all poised to suit up for the season once again. It's safe to say that Northwest is looking to bounce back this season as they make yet another run for the title. The women are also looking to have a big season as they're entering their sixth of Coach Austin Meyer's career with the Bearcats. As it currently stands, the women are ranked sixth in the MIAA preseason rankings and will look to make yet another run during the MIAA tournament. The overall national rankings will be released this week and we'll keep an eye out to see if the women can squeeze their way into a top 25 slot. That's all the time we have for Bearcat Update. I've been your host, Matt Rapp, and you're watching Bearcat Update, the provider of complete coverage of Northwest sports. We post a new episode every Monday at 6 p.m. and you can find us on YouTube at KNWT TV. As well as Bearcat Update, you can watch KNWT's other content. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next week.